So uh, again, thank you very much for coming. Um, my name is Javier uh, Colomino. Uh, I'm going to very briefly uh, show you uh, how to test uh, or how to evaluate the uh, electronic medical condition of a uh, medium voltage circuit breaker using the PME 500 TR and circuit breaker analyzer. Okay, so this is uh, the setup we have. Uh, this is the circuit breaker we are going to test. <laughs> So it's a three-phase breaker, and for this uh, particular session, we have uh, furnished uh, this breaker with uh, a group of batteries in order to energize the, uh, the spring-loading motor, uh, operation uh, coils, and so on. The breaker is uh, already partially connected to the instrument, which is here. The instrument is a PME 500 TR. It's a three-phase timer, uh, including also uh, some features like uh, uh, contact resistance uh, measurement, okay, which is not very common to find in regular uh, circuit breaker analyzers. Uh, also here you can see well the, the, the groups of, uh, of multi-connectors. Okay, uh, these uh, four groups I will show you now on the screen. Uh, what, uh, what do they do? Uh, okay, they uh, connect the instrument to the breaker, to the different sections of the breaker, mainly the coil control, the uh, main contacts, I mean the, the high voltage contacts, Auxiliary contacts to compare the timing with the main contact as well, and the contact resistance uh, voltmeter. And also, you can see here a uh, data connection which is now uh, installed, uh, connecting to my computer in order to show you how to transfer the results of the test to the computer uh, at the end. This is the objective of, of this test. Uh, finally, what we need to get is a report showing the synchronization of the open and closed movements in the main contacts in the circuit breaker, uh, as you can see here. Okay, yeah, okay. In, in this section of the graphic, you can see a chronograph uh, showing in uh, solid black the uh, closed, closed uh, status of the circuit breaker, of the circuit breaker, the main contacts in the breaker. So uh, as I was saying, um, what you have here, it, this is a, a test sequence of a closing, opening and closing. As you can see here in the reports, okay, the, the tested sequence is a close, open, close. And you can see the activity of the main contacts, okay, closing here, opening here, and then re-closing here again. And also, of uh, the activity of two additional contacts, uh, which is represented in the upper uh, lines in the in the, in the chronograph. Okay, so, so these are the auxiliary contacts. This is another break. This is a different break than the, than the one that we have. And also in the in the upper section of the graphic, what you get is a is a coil current. Okay, the operation coil current in, in this section here. You have the closing coil activity, I mean the, the current going across the close, closing coil during the close command. Then you have the open coil here, okay, and then again the closing coil here. In the same report, you can see also a contact resistance measurement in the, in the three phases. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please do not hesitate to uh, to stop me. Okay, just activate your mic and say hello and place any question you need to place. All right. So, so uh, this is uh, this is the breaker we are testing. Okay, uh, this is a, a very a quite quite tall breaker, but it's very useful to show the uh, the principles of the basic operation of uh, of a circuit breaker, in this case a, a small volume of all circuit breaker, okay. And this is the instrument we are, we are using, the PME 500 TR. This instrument is a, basically a three-phase timer, okay. This is able to uh, register uh, timestamps for any change in the main contacts and two auxiliary contacts with a resolution of one-tenth of a millisecond.
it will also uh, uh, make a graph and record coil currents uh, sampled at the rate of 10 kilohertz. And we'll also measure the uh, contact resistance in the main contacts when they are closed. You also have a built-in printer which are which are the batteries which, which allows you to, to use the use the units uh, with no mains AC. Uh, it has non-volatile memory, of course, to save the results. It can be connected to a PC to download the results to the PC. And it is also uh, uh, furnished with uh, Windows software for that purpose. Okay, what you can see here is that is a mechanical indicator synchronized with the movement or with the position of the circuit breaker. So now I'm going to issue a manual uh, close so you can see how it works. Okay, I'm first going to energize the breaker. So as, as you see, the, uh, the breaker stays in the same open position, but now the springs, the operation springs, are loaded. Okay. So it's ready for the first test. I want to uh, describe how are the connections to the main contact. The screen we can see a schematic diagram showing the multi-connectors going from the instrument, first multi-connector going to the coil control in the breaker, second one going to the main contacts, and the last one here going also to the main contacts for contact resistance. This is what I'm going to show you now. These are the main contacts connections, okay? Two of the, two of the faces are already connected to save some time, and there's one a face left that I am going to use to show you how to connect the pairs of uh, terminals coming from the main contact and contact resistance multi connectors. Okay, so basically, what I get from those multi connectors are these three pairs of contacts. Okay, they are two reds and two blacks, okay, two reds and two blacks. If I take them pair by pairs, I will, I will see that uh, one of the two reds is labeled with an R, okay, which means resistance measurement. And the other red one is labeled with a Z. So uh, I am going to use one of the reds for resistance measurement and one and the other one for current. And the same with the two blacks, okay? The two blacks are correspondingly labeled as resistance measurement and contact, okay? So what I'm going to uh, do is to place uh, these pairs on once on each side of the uh, circuit breaker. Now look at this. You see the circuit breaker is uh, already partially uh, connected. And I, I see that the red connections have been used on the upper plates. So I have to be consistent and place the red connections on the upper plates. So I take the R connection, which is for resistance. And place it here. I will show you why I'm placing it here and not here. Okay. The other way here with the, two, with the blacks and do the same on the lower plate of the pole. Okay, these are the pole. This is the pole, the chamber, the breaking chamber. Okay. And uh, the connection is being opened and closed here inside. Okay. So I take the uh, Contact, I mean the terminal labeled as R for resistance and place it here. And the, con the terminal labeled as C and place it here. Okay, so you see, I have placed the R terminals here and here. If you look at the uh, geometry, at the geometry of the plates, you possibly will see the plates better here. You see the plates are coming inside the chamber in this direction. 
So the, the upper connection in, in each plate it are closer to the contact inside the chamber than the lower connection in each plate. We can see here how the C labeled terminals are placed on the outside of the connection, here and here. Okay, the reds and the blacks. And the R labeled or contact resistance are placed inside the connection, I mean, closer to the chamber than the C connection. This corresponds to the typical connections in a micrometer. Okay, this is what we call the four wire or four terminal connections in a micrometer or Kelvin connection. In the Kelvin connection, you have a current injector injecting, generating some current across the conductor here. Okay. And then you have voltage drop terminals to both sides of the point which conduct resistance you want to measure. So you always place the conduct resistance or voltage drop uh, measuring terminals as close as possible to the measured spot. And then you can place the current injection the spots of connection wherever you wish. It doesn't matter. Giving a fast loop to the multi connectors in the, in the instrument, you have the control the multi connector here, which is connected to the control coils, the operation coils in the breaker. Okay, you can possibly see here a group of connections two of which correspond to the close and to the close and open coils in the breaker. And I will uh, start showing you the basic operation, how we uh, set up the test and prepare the instrument to perform the test we want to do. You can see here, the, uh, let me show you here, uh, the, uh, the PME 500 TR and touch screen distributed in uh, four main tabs. Okay, this is the results tab, the graphic results. This is the numerical results. This is the settings for the, for the test, and this is the data tab. If we go to the data tab, what we find there is uh, just the uh, text fields that uh, you can modify by using the uh, built in keyboard. Okay, you can enter information on the te uh, text screens basically to document the text. Exit from here and go to the settings, uh, to the settings uh, tab here, where you can basically define the type of test you want to do. Okay, this is the first option. You see uh, now it is selected C and O, which is a sequence. Uh, by which the uh, breaker will be commanded to perform a close operation followed by an open operation. So it will be a close open sequence. All right. Then in the, in the, second, uh, in the second field, uh, the duration field, you have a, a group of number figures indicating the length or the duration in milliseconds of the corresponding commands. For example, in this case, we have 100 milliseconds for the close command, 100 milliseconds for the open command, and two zeros indicating that we are not inserting any wait time between two consecutive commands. You also have another uh, number of uh, options on also indicating the resolution of the graphics you want to get. The, the event that will trigger the, the uh, that will start the chronometer and so on. Okay, let's go faster. Okay, and let's start with a simple close open test. We exit from the settings by going directly to the test screen. In the test screen, you can see there are a, a couple of buttons that allow you to operate manually the circuit breaker. This is very useful. To check that your control connections are correct, okay, that you are connecting properly the instrument to the operation coils in the in the circuit breaker. 
if you have any errors, this manual button here will back up it. Okay. So now we can, for example, we can issue a manual uh, close command as the instrument is uh, is now open, as you can see in the dial. Okay, in the dial here. Okay, this is this is open. So we can issue manually a close command so you can see it. Why I say manually? I say manually because there is a difference between manually and automatic. If I do it manually, it will not be recorded anywhere. It will not take part of the reports. It will just be issued to the breaker, but will not produce any, any results or any recording. So I will issue now a closing command. Let's recover the initial open in order to perform the close open sequence for the test. Is that open? Okay. Yeah, we are coming back to the initial position. And now we are going to press start stop in order to execute the test that we have programmed, which is a close open sequence. Okay. So we, uh, we press when, uh, when, when I press here, you will see that it takes uh, approximately one second and a half for the unit to initialize the test before the first command is actually uh, issued to the circuit breaker. We start. <laughs> Position. It's open, so we are in the same position as we were in the beginning. So we can exit the test screen here, and we can see the results on the screen. This is the low resolution representation, okay, just for you to check that uh, the results are consistent with the test you have programmed. The three phases are represented. Uh, some auxiliary contacts are also, also connected to the instrument are also represented. There is there's a small uh, graph indicating some coil uh, current and so on. It is a low resolution image that helps you to uh, assess that the test has been uh, successfully uh, finished. Also, in the reverse tab, you have the numerical results. Okay, so you have three pairs of results, which are the close and open time stamps for each phase. So you can see that the first phase uh, finished the closing command at 114.4 milliseconds after the start of the test. In the second, in the second phase, it was very, very similar. And also in the third phase. And then you have the timestamps for the open. Okay, so you found close and open here. So, uh, and also we can navigate and see that we have. We don't have any contact resistance measurement because we haven't measured. So let's go and measure it now. Let's go to the test. But you, you, you see that the circuit breaker is, is open now. So we cannot do this measurement. We need to close the, the breaker now in order to perform the, the contact resistance measure. So we issue a manually closed command. <laughs> Now that we are in the closed position, we can uh, press the contact resistance measurement, uh, measurement button here. It will take just a small, short while to make the measurement, and it's done. So we come back to the results. To the results tab. And now you can see three values for, uh, for contact resistance. You have uh, 0 0.216 milliohms for the first phase, then you have 84 micro ohms for the second phase, and 94 micro ohms for the third phase. So these are uh, quite uh, 
different values. This is in pitch up and down because this is a break that we use for training people. For these results, I want to have a pretty dot. You can see, I think, uh, let me move this slightly. Okay. And now you can see that uh, the information. Is more is better distributed throughout all the length of the printout area. Okay, so we can see more details about the timing of the main contacts, which are in the bottom, in the bottom of the of the image. Okay, the three main contacts and two auxiliary contacts uh, that have uh, been also connected to the instrument from the circuit breaker. Namely, the, the coil control points. Okay, these are these are the other two traces that you are uh, seeing on the top of the graphics. Okay, so uh, very quickly, I'm going to show you how to uh, export all this to the, to the computer. Or what I'm going to do is to save it into memory. I can select you know, folders. In the, in the saving area and storage area. For example, folder number two is empty. I'm going to save it here. So let's come to the computer screen and open your breaker. Okay, so we have a new breaker here. And it is uh, looking at uh, an instrument connected on COM4. It has found it. Okay, it is asking me if I want to download the entire contents of uh, of the memory. I say no. I just I just want to download the test that we have done today. So we go to set two and click on download the sector. That is downloading. You can see the progress here on the, on the lower part of the screen. Okay, you can also see the serial number of the instrument connected. Let's make the screen smaller. We can directly uh, preview the results on this small screen. So I can see it in a larger size. So this is a larger size. It will automatically take a graphic here, a logo of your company, if you have placed a graphic file with your the company logo uh, on the uh, on the installation directory of your breaker. You just place that file there, name logo, and it will be automatically inserted in every report that you produce. You can export it with the report to a PDF or an image file. You can also send it right away from here by email to someone. So thanks very much for your attention. I hope uh, we can uh, see you here back again on uh, future uh, seminars. Thanks very much. Goodbye.